Join me on a journey of discovery as I discuss feline asthma today. I'm Dr. M. Welcome to VMC. Let's discuss risk factors, treatments, and more. Let's make sure your cat can enjoy every breath of fresh air that they take quite literally. Join me. You'll learn something today. Asthma is a disease of the lower airways and it affects somewhere between 1 and 5% of cats. There is a little bit of disagreement among researchers about the precise definition of asthma, but most seem to agree that this is an issue that occurs when a cat inhales a allergen that their body doesn't like. And those particles end up stimulating the cat's immune system. So when a susceptible cat first inhales an allergen, her immune system will take note of it and start reacting to it. And the way the body does that is by creating antibodies to that specific antigen. Then in the future, when the cat gets exposed to the antigen again, their body already knows about it and will have a bit of an overreaction to it. And you get a cascade of events that result in a lot of inflammation in the lower airways. The immune cells will trigger a cascade of events that promotes inflammation. And as a result, the cat will experience experience irritation, swelling, and a reactive constriction to those airways. So the diameter of the airways will decrease and there will be an increase of mucus production inside of the airways as well. This limits the ability of the air to move through those airways and that's why the cat has a hard time with breathing. The average age of a cat that's diagnosed with asthma is around five years of age. Next, let's cover the clinical signs. It's pretty classic that you might hear wheezing. They tend to have the most difficulty on the exhale of the breath, but you might also see just a rapid breathing. They might do a coughing or a hacking, and it's incredibly common for my clients to mistake coughing coughing for a cat that's trying to vomit but can't. Most of the time those cats actually have a cough. Just like with most diseases, there is a range of severity. So if you ever have a cat that is doing any of these things, try to get some video of it and bring it to the clinic as that can be very helpful for your veterinarian. Now sometimes the cats can be hacking and coughing so severely that it can cause vomiting and that can make things very confusing for people. Also on the more severe end of symptoms, we we might see a cat that's open mouth breathing. This is always an emergency. Cats should not be open mouth breathing and if they ever are, you need to seek veterinary attention immediately. During an asthma attack, it's pretty common for cats. They have this classic posture where they're hunched and low to the ground and they'll extend their neck out in order to try to help them to breathe. This is very serious if you ever see your cat doing this and they need veterinary attention. Asthma attacks can be life-threatening so it is important that this is treated. When it comes to a diagnosis, the cat's medical history is a very important part. If you can bring us video of what your cat does at home, that's also very helpful because they'll tend to hide symptoms in the clinic if they can. But in this case, this is another scenario where a picture is worth a thousand words and often chest x-rays will enable us to make a diagnosis. This is because often the x-rays will show the inflammation in the airways, but it doesn't always, especially in the kind of low grade more chronic asthmatic cat. If the x-rays don't give us an answer, then that's when we consider things like CT or bronchoscopy. The reason why we might do bronchoscopy is because we can then collect some cells from the inside of the airways. Now it is important before we diagnose asthma and start the treatment for it that we rule out the other common issues that can cause very similar diagnostic findings and very similar clinical pictures. This is why a heart Heartworm test and a fecal test to look for the lungworms may be part of the diagnostic workup for your cat. This is particularly important because medications that are used to treat a lot of these other medical issues can cause more harm than good to a cat with asthma. So it's pretty important that we do a proper medical workup. Next, we'll move on to treatment. Now, this will depend a little bit on the severity of your cat's clinical symptoms. There are some that require light sedation to reduce the effort of their 
breathing and we might also need to hospitalize them with oxygen supplementation for a period of time. Then we also will give them a corticosteroid to reduce inflammation in the lungs. There are also bronchodilators that can be used to increase the size of the airways, but we don't ever use bronchodilators on their own as those do not address the inflammation within the airways. We do prefer to give these medications in an inhaled form using something like the AeroCat. This is because this delivers the medication directly to where it's needed and you tend to get the best response that way. There are some other therapies that are being researched and explored at the moment but that we don't quite have enough information on yet. It may be possible that desensitization to allergens might help some cats. Think of like allergy shots in people. Some people are trying to use omega fatty acids. Those can disrupt some of the inflammation pathway. We just don't quite have enough research on this yet because cats are cats and they do what they will. <laughs> there are some cats that have a food allergy that will end up having respiratory problems. And so as part of the treatment plan, your veterinarian may recommend a proper prescription hypoallergenic food trial. But in most cases, the most commonly suspected allergens are things like tobacco smoke. You should never be smoking around your cat. At the very bare minimum, go outside to smoke and ideally you would change your clothes before you come back inside. Vapors from household cleaning solutions or aerosolized sprays, so many of them are so fragrant and scented and it's just awful for our pet's respiratory tracts. This includes essential oil diffusers as well, which is one of the very many reasons why I do not recommend you use those in a household if you have pets. But the cat might also be reacting to pollen from trees or plants or grasses, mold, dust mites, all of those things might play a role. Smoke from candles and fireplaces can also bother our cats with asthma, so avoiding those is also important. Important. And lastly, making sure that you are using a low dust clumping cat litter. They will tend to advertise on the bag if they are low dust, but that can be very important for cats with asthma. Unfortunately, there is no way to cure a cat of asthma, but often they can be well managed. If we reduce their exposure to allergens in their homes, we give them the medications that they need to control their symptoms, and we monitor them closely for changes in respiratory rate and respiratory effort. Most asthmatic cats live a wonderful healthy life when we implement those things. As you know, I am all about prevention where it's possible. It is helpful in preventing problems when we reduce the exposure that a cat has to bronchial irritants. Overweight and obese cats might have an increased risk of asthma as well, so keeping your cat a lean body condition score is important. It's important for many reasons, but there is a bit of a link here too. And lastly, keeping on top of the dental disease is very important, and this includes intraoral x-rays. This is because bacteria in the mouth can get into to the bloodstream and travel throughout the body and it can cause inflammation in the airways and if your cat has asthma or is predisposed to having respiratory problems having dental disease will make that worse this topic was one that was suggested by you and i'm very grateful for that suggestion if you have another topic you'd like me to cover please leave it in the comments below and also tell me about your cat do they have asthma do they not did you ever find out what particular bronchial irritants triggered them. To prove that I read every comment, I highlight a new one every week and I put out a new video most Fridays, so I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Have a wonderful week and bye! And you will get... My dog is dreaming. I presume you can hear it very distracting. I'm having a hard time saying this. <laughs> <laughs>